Welcome back. In the previous segment, we have considered how the regulation of the written press can be implemented so that the principles of pluralism, diversity and independence are ensured and protected. In this segment, we are going to look at those same principles in the context of the broadcasting media, meaning television and radio. And we will see how there are some very good reasons as to why the regulation of broadcasting may be quite different from the regulation of the written press. Let me introduce the segment with a couple of examples. The first one is uh, an example I've mentioned earlier. Radio Caracas Television, RCTV, one of the oldest television stations in Venezuela. Uh, it was denied a renewal of its broadcasting license in 2007. Its equipment was seized and so on and so forth. The case of RCTV ultimately reached the level of the Inter-American Court for Human Rights, which ruled against the government of Venezuela. The court considered that the decision to not renew the license of RCTV came directly from the executive branch and that the government's real purpose in denying the license was because of RCTV's critical view toward the government. The court added that the abuse of power had an immediate negative effect on the exercise of freedom of expression. The people of Venezuela had been deprived of RCTV news because its editorial policy was critical toward the government. The real reason behind the government behavior, according to the court, was thus to silence critics in contravention to the spirit of the right to freedom of expression, which are pluralism, tolerance and openness. Let's unpack this decision a bit more. Broadcasting, whether through radios or television, require access to airways, or what is called the spectrum. These are limited. They must be shared with a range of other broadcasters. For this main technical reason, it has been widely accepted around the world that broadcasting requires some kind of government oversight. Not everyone can and should be able to access the spectrum without some kind of regulation as to how is this spectrum going to be attributed. Such a position, of course, dates back to another era when the digitalization of broadcasting was not available. With internet ra uh, radios and television, the argument is losing some of its significance. Still, there are many parts of the world where most people access television and radios via the existing spectrum. And so there are still some very strong arguments why these must be attributed on a fair and uh, transparent basis. Regulation of broadcasting is thus not just meant to control or to forbid access to the spectrum. Indeed, it is also meant to protect it is also meant to ensure that people who wish to access the spectrum, who wish to open their radio, can do so um, legally. So it is meant to protect media pluralism against monopoly, whether it's a monopoly by the state or monopoly by another actor. To play its role of protector of media pluralism, the broadcasting regulatory body must meet a number of conditions. First, it must be fully independent from state but also commercial interest. Among other things, this independence is demonstrated through the appointment process of the members and the allocation of the license. This is where the Inter-American Court took exception with the treatment of Radio Caracas Television. The decision to not to renew the license was political. It was not a regulatory decision. It had nothing to do with getting access to the spectrum or too many people being on the spectrum. It was, strictly speaking, a political decision. And as thus, it was violating the um, right to freedom of expression. Second, 
the regulatory body for broadcasting should take all measures necessary to ensure that there is no state or other forms of monopoly over broadcasting. And here I quote from the Inter-American Court in its uh, ruling over the uh, Radio Caracas, Venezuela. State monopolies are incompatible with the right of the public to receive information from a variety of sources. Simply allowing private broadcasters, however, is not enough. State should take steps to ensure that broadcasting licenses are awarded to operators who collectively, collectively present a wide and balanced range of views and information which serves the interest and the needs of the population as a whole. Here, the uh, Inter-American Court is really uh, demonstrating what the, the principle of pluralism means in practice. It means a plurality of media outlets, a plurality of views, broadcasting views, being heard on, on the spectrum. And that means no monopoly of any kind. Thirdly, and again largely to ensure media pluralism, the regulatory body should provide for three kinds of broadcasting public, private, and community broadcasting. Now, these um, are concepts which you may not, not have come across, but uh, I think uh, you may already have some ideas of what we mean here. What is public broadcasting? Public broadcasting is not state broadcasting. In fact, under international uh, standard, there should be no broadcaster owned by the state. There should be a broadcaster supported by the state to push forward public interest news. This is the so-called public broadcasting. It may be state-funded, but it does not serve the interest of the government. It serves the interest of the public. Private broadcasting, I think, goes without saying, is means, means that it's broadcasting privately owned and often enough for profit. And that is, in many parts of the world, the primary source and forms of broadcasting. There are the third forms of broadcasting, which is very important in, in many parts of the world, uh, and it's called community broadcasting. There is no real definition of what is meant by community broadcasting, or rather the definition is so broad uh, it may lose its uh, meaning. But basically, it's usually not for profit, it's community-based, and by community I mean either geographical community or a community of interest. And it usually tends to serve the interest of a particular community um, or of a particular objective or topic. So there will be community broadcasting on peace. Uh, there may be community broadcasting for, for women. There may be community broadcasting indeed on, on, uh, some, for some religious groups. It usually takes the form of an association or a non-governmental organization. And those three forms of uh, broadcasting, public, private and community, should be protected by the regulatory body in place to attribute the spectrum. All of those three forms of broadcasting should be able to access the, the airways in order to broadcast to their public, how big or small their public may be. Let's consider a few more cases to illustrate the topic of broadcasting regulation. Here, I would like to highlight the case of Radio Osgur Radio, based in Istanbul. Again, it had its broadcasting license suspended twice, once for 90 days and another time for a year, by the Turkish Broadcasting Regulatory Authority, RTUK. RTUK found that the station's programs incited people to engage in violence, terrorism, and undermined the country's territorial integrity which were ground for suspension. The radio station unsuccessfully challenged the suspension in national court. And after exhausting all of these uh, national uh, remedies, the station challenged 
the suspension of its license at the European Court under Article 10, alleging violation of its freedom of expression. The European Court held that the programs dealt with issues in the general interest, including corruption, anti-terrorism, and possible links between the state and the mafia. Furthermore, the information the radio station was sharing was already publicly available. Additionally, the court said, although some programs were aggressive in tone, they never called for violence. On the basis of this, the European Court ruled in favor of the radio. So um, here, we need to highlight the fact that the broadcaster, uh, Broadcasting Regulation Authority can deny a license on the basis of programs that may indeed be inciting to violence. However, not all programs that displease the government or the authorities can be indicted under the uh, national security uh, issue or under uh, issues related to hate speech. And that's what the European Court uh, highlighted, that there was nothing in the programming of that radio that amounted to incitement to terrorism or to hatred. Let me give you another example in Ghana. The Ministry of Finance defended a highly criticized budget proposal on state radio and publication. A member of the New Patriotic Party, which is um, the opposition party, requested access to the, um, the, the main television, the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, in order to comment on the budget proposal. But he could not access um, the, the airways. The New Patriotic Party then sued the national broadcaster for violation of the Constitution, which affords fair opportunities for the presentation of divergent views and dissenting opinions. Indeed, the Constitution requires the state to provide fair opportunity to all political parties to present their programs to the public by ensuring equal access to the state-owned media. So the, the case goes to the uh, Constitutional Court of Ghana eventually, and in its decision, the court stressed the importance of neutrality of the national broadcaster and that it should show no bias or favor to the government or to any uh, political party. The court further explained that this objective was enshrined in the Constitution by requiring public media companies to provide fair opportunities to all political parties. Particularly, the court highlighted, and I quote, the state media are national assets. They belong to the entire community, not to the abstraction known as the state, nor to the government in office, nor to its party. If such national assets were to become the mouthpiece of anyone or the combination of parties vying for power, democracy would be no more than a sham. A public service broadcaster thus requires a supportive legal, political and financial environment that will insulate it against any risk of political or commercial interference in the discharge of its mandate. In that example here, we have a, a, a remarkable demonstration of what public service broadcasting means, how different it is from private uh, own uh, broadcasting, and the importance of regulation in order to protect public service broadcasters against uh, the government, of course, and particularly uh, political uh, interest or political parties. In conclusion, we have learned in this segment that the, uh, the, the, the broadcasting sector can be the object, and indeed should be the object, of regulation in order to protect fair, transparent and balanced access to the airways, to the so-called uh, spectrum. 
in order to protect against monopolies, particularly against state monopolies. These are at the heart of the implementation of media regulatory principles, meaning pluralism, diversity, and independence. In the next segment, we will consider what this means for individual journalists. Thank you very much.